What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colocraft Bushcraft. If this is your first time here, my name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills. It's probably been about three weeks I think since I did my last proper video uh, and I've really really missed making them. Um, I'll be doing some other stuff that I'll tell you about in a minute uh, but I really enjoy making these videos so I'm absolutely thrilled today to be back at camp uh, and filming a new video for you, uh, video for you guys. Today I'm going to test out some new products that I've got, some new uh, new bits of bushcraft kit. Uh, I'm just going to cook up some lunch as well. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. So you guys may or may not have noticed um, that I haven't been putting out videos as regularly as I uh, usually would over the last few weeks. Uh, and, the, and the reason for that is I've been doing other things. Uh, the first of which was I actually attended my first uh, proper bushcraft course. It was run by a company called Woodland Ways uh, and I had an absolutely brilliant time doing it. It was up in Oxfordshire, it was run over a weekend and it was a real kind of simple introduction to, uh, to bushcraft and, and survival skills in general really. So we covered all kinds of things around uh, things like fire and, and shelter building and, and natural navigation and water purification and, and so much stuff and game prep and stuff like that. Too much to, uh, to try and tell you all about in one go. Um, but it was absolutely brilliant. I learned a lot and I can't wait to kind of um, put the stuff that I learned into, into practice and I, uh, I'm really looking forward to booking on to the next kind of level up uh, of those courses. So uh, as I said, the company's Woodland Ways. If you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to get yourself on a bushcraft course, I'd, I'd, I'd really suggest checking them out. They're absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'll leave a link to their website in the description down below. So that's reason one. Reason two uh, is that it's been my birthday. So it's my birthday last week, maybe a week and a half ago. Um, so I decided just to, uh, to relax and, and enjoy myself for a little bit. Uh, I had a really good time, a few mates came over and we had like a little camp out um, in our garden and a few beers around a fire which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I got a few bits of, uh, a few bits of bushcraft kit as well from, uh, from some very, very generous people. So that's kind of the reason for, or the, uh, the theory behind today's video to, to try out the new, uh, new products that I've got. So, uh, so as I said, I'm going to try out some new things. I've got a new knife that I want to try. I've got a new billy can that I want to have a go with. Um, and I thought while I'm here, I should cook up some lunch. So I've got a nice big side of salmon. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, a while ago I was doing a learning from Ray Mears kind of sort of series um, for using one of the books, his books that I've got. Uh, and in that he has a, uh, a cooking uh, method for things like salmon called Arctic char. Uh, so I thought I would have a go at that uh, today as well. So as I said, cook up some salmon, test out my new products and generally just relax and spend some time outside because I haven't done that for a little while. Uh, right, so we better get going. I should stop rambling, stop talking to the camera and just get on with it. Um, so the first thing I need to do... Actually, the first thing I think I'm going to do is put my tarp up over uh, over my camp here, namely because, uh, well, I think it might rain. I'm not certain. I think there's a 50 to 60% chance it might rain in about an hour. Uh, and I don't want to get caught out. I don't want the camera to get wet and stuff. So I'm going to put the tarp up and then get fire going. So I'm going to shut up now, I promise, and shut up and get on with it. Alright, so I've got my tarp set up. It's by no means the best setup I've ever done, but whatever it'll do. Uh, I just popped the little tripod here, um, just on the off chance that it does rain and the water starts to weigh the tarp down just to uh, keep it up off the fire. Uh, I'm not having a big fire by any means, um, but yeah, better safe than sorry. Uh, so the next thing to do is get the fire going. I figured what I would do is start to cook the salmon, start to cook the fish, and then do the kind of the producty bits um, while this fish was cooking. So I better get a fire going, so I need to process some wood. Just as I got the fire going, the uh, rain started coming down a little bit, although the sun's still shining as well. So, anyway, glad I got the tarp up. Um, what I need for the uh, salmon is for the fire to burn down into a decent kind of bed of coals. So, I'm going to leave that for a little while. I do have a little prep to do for the salmon anyway, uh, but I thought I would show you the products that I'm, uh, or the, the new bits of kit that I've got, uh, that I'm going to try out today. Um, that's part of the reason you're here, right? To see these products. So, the first thing. Um, I'm going to show you is my new uh, bushcraft knife, uh, which is a real steel bushcraft 2 uh, convex knife. Uh, it comes in this really fun little box. Um, what I've got here, by the way, is my mini, uh, almost like a, almost like a GoPro, but a, a cheap version. Um, the reason that I'm using this as well is because I can't be bothered to keep stepping backwards and forwards from the big camera. <laughs> So 
So I thought it'd be easier for me to have this on my knee and use my little camera to show you uh, exactly what it looks like. So anyway, so if I keep chopping and changing between the shots and it looks a bit bad, please, please don't hold it against me. So when it first arrives, it comes in this uh, quite nice silver box, to be honest. The writing is really cool. It all looks very slick. So this is a, a real steel, oh, this zoom's not working particularly well. It's a real steel Bushcraft Plus convex knife. And now the reason I got this is um, I wanted, oh, the, all of the knives that I've got are pretty much a Scandi grind. Um, and I wanted to experiment and try different uh, blade grinds to see if there was any big difference, if I could tell the difference or, or what. So that's the reason that I bought this, uh, a convex blade. Um, <clears throat> I haven't used this before particularly. I have had it out of the box, so I do know what it looks like already, but I haven't really tried it. So anyway, uh, so let's get into it. So we'll open it up, which is easier with one hand. Here we go. So this is what it first looks like when it arrives. So it comes in its nylon sheath. As you can see, there is a little bit of dirt on it, but that's only because, as I said before, I have had it out of the box already, and I've used it a couple of times. So the first thing to notice um, is, I think, the sheath itself. And to be perfectly honest with you, well, it's it's not it's not my cup of tea. Um, I I think it's horrible and ugly, but I'm sure others will disagree. Uh, the cool thing with this one, though, is that you can hang it horizontally on your belt. As well as as well as vertically, which is part of the reason as well that I that I got it. But anyway, so I'm not a massive fan of the sheath, um, but it does have some fun little features. So I'll just show you those quickly. Uh, with it in the box, if anybody's interested, it comes with its little guarantee e thing and a cloth and uh, some little a little tiny Allen key to help to undo some of the bolts in the blade if you need to. Anyway, so this is the sheath itself. It's all made of nylon and it does have this fun little pouch here where you could put like a, a DC4 sharpener or something like that. Maybe a fire steel if you wanted to. It all comes with uh, Velcro, so the attachments to your belt itself is all Velcro. Um, which again, I guess the reason is that it's a fairly cheap way of doing it perhaps. I'm not a massive fan of it. I would much prefer a leather sheath, but there we go. Anyway. So here we go. So the other thing that I'm going to show you very quickly is if I take the blade out, just put that to one side for now. Um, one thing that is quite good with this is the, the plastic sheath that's in here is actually removable. So if I undo these bits here, if I take this bit off, sorry, this is really hard to do with one hand. Um, pull this bit out. plastic sheath itself then comes out. So if you wanted to you could get rid of the plastic of the nylon sheath itself and just have the plastic bit here which because of these holes in it that you can see here and here here and here you could I suppose turn it into a belt knife put it on some power uh, on a, a neck knife sorry put it on some paracord that kind of thing. Um, so the sheath itself is molded so the knife will only go in one way and it does lock into place so that is quite good it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to come off, which I quite like. Um, the good thing about the sheath being able to come out, is what I was getting to, uh, is that it does mean that you can hang it whichever way you want. So, if you, uh, so for example, I'm right-handed, so if I wanted this horizontally on my back, I would put it that way. But then if I was to put that on my side, if I pick it up and do it the same way, you see that in the big camera, um, the knife's done the wrong way around. So I would have to, if I wanted it to be vertical, I would need to flip the sheath the other way up, put it back in like that, and then it would work vertically and would be the right way around. I hope that makes sense. So as I say, I'm not a big fan of the sheath itself, but I can see why it is the way it is and it does have some advantages. Anyway, uh, onto the knife itself. So as I said before, this is a convex grind, so it does look slightly different. The knife, the, the knife itself, the knife, the knife itself, I actually do like the look of. Uh, I think it's quite slick, fits well in the hand, it's nice and big. Uh, it's got this little bobbly bit on the top here. I think that's for extra grip, I'm not entirely certain. If anyone knows, please do tell me. Uh, but I actually think it looks pretty slick. Um, it's nice and simple, 
it's not overly decorated. As you can see, it is full tang, which is what I wanted, and it does have a nice grip as well. So all in all, the knife, it's, the knife itself, I actually really like the look of it. I think it's quite aesthetically pleasing. I'm just not a big fan of the sheath. But there we go. Put this away. Whew. I need to move my fire around a little bit. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying this out. I have used it a tiny little bit um, last time I was down at my camp with um, a couple of friends just for the evening. Uh, but I, don't, I haven't really tested it at all properly. So this is going to be the knife that I'm going to use today. I'm going to try and put it through its paces. Um, I'm going to need it for some of the um, prep that I need to do for the salmon. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to using it. We shall try it out and I will let you know if I notice any difference between the, uh, the convex grind and the Scandi grind. Given my limited knowledge of bushcraft and knives, I don't know if I'll see any difference, but who knows? So the other thing, whoa, get smoke in my eyes. I just need to rearrange the fire. Give me a sec. My second piece of new kit that I want to try out today is my new billy can. Um, the one that I've got, my TBS billy can is only 500 milliliters, so it's not very big. Uh, and I wanted a bigger one, so I was very, very kindly bought this for my birthday. This is a Camel Will Camping Kettle, and I think it holds about a litre. Uh, so it's brand new. Uh, I've only taken it out of the box. I have never used it. So I'll just give you a quick look on this camera. Um, the cool thing about this one is it does have a little spout. So let's open her up and take a look. As you can see, still in its original packaging. Get rid of the box. Pop that on the fire in a minute. Comes with its own little carry bag, which I think is very, very cool. Hopefully you guys can see that. Put that away. So here it is. As you can see, brand spanking new. It's got handles on the side. I like a lot. It's got a handle over the top to hang, which I'm very, very happy about as well. Uh, and of course, it has a little thing to take it off, take the lid off as well. So I think it's very, very cool. Ooh. Brand spanking shiny new. I like the fact that it's got a spout. I think that's really cool. And as I say, it is very, very new, very, very shiny. So I think it's high time uh, we put some jar on it. Uh, so the plan today um, is to try out my new stuff. So for this, I thought it would be cool, uh, as well as to try out the knife, uh, to try out the billy can. Would be I'm going to make uh, a little pot of coffee in this uh, in a minute, uh, and I thought I would carve out a hanging pot from this. So the billy can hopefully will hang there. Might need to cut it down slightly. I might even need to find a new stick. Um, cut it down and then make various different notches on my hanging stick so that I can hang it from my fire. So if you take a look here, I swivel the camera around. So the idea being, oops, sorry, not very straight there. There we go. So the idea being, I will be able to hang this bit from various different heights from a piece of paracord attached to this uh, and hang the kettle at different heights. Uh, as and when I need to. So that's the plan. Um, before I do any of that though, I need to get my lunch sorted because I'm kind of hungry, so I need to get my fish sorted. Uh, so as I said before, I've got a oh, lovely big side of salmon from good old Tesco, uh, which I'm going to use. Uh, and I'm going to use the Arctic char method that I read about in Ray Mears' book, or at least I'm going to try to. So for that, I need uh, three pieces of uh, green. I think ideally he said to use willow. I don't know if there's any willow in the bit of woodland that I am in. So I basically, I'm going to do, I all, do what I always do and make it up as I go along. But I need three, basically three bits take this sticker off so you can actually see what I'm doing. So the idea is to get two shorter, completely um, bark-free, flat, I think, uh, bits of willow and to actually put them through the fish, one at the top and kind of one sort of 
I guess sort of one a third of the way from the top and a third away from the bottom. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm just going along with it. So you pop those through the fish itself, through the meat, and then you take a much longer piece of split uh, green willow, uh, and then you wedge the fish inside the inside the stick. So it effectively, if my arm's the stick, it'll be like that. Uh, and then obviously you have to tie the two ends of it apart so it's nice and um, secure. The fish is nice and secure. And then you stand it up at the side of your fire uh, when the fire is kind of at embers. Sorry, I'm getting smoked out here. Uh, kind of at embers, and then you just let the fish cook slowly that way. So I thought A, it would be a cool way to, to try and cook this fish, uh, and B, it would be good to, uh, to have a go with a new knife uh, to see about the carving. So I'm going to go and find some green bits of wood. Oh, blimey, smoke! Stop it! Uh, some green bits of wood, uh, and we'll get on with the carving. Wish me luck, because I'm hungry and I want to eat. <clears throat> so I've got my bits of wood, and I'm now going to start carving off my steaks. Um, the wood that I'm using, I think, is ash, uh, and it is, isn't is green. Um, the main reason being, I didn't really want to take down uh, a tree where I am. Um, so I'm just going to try it with this and see what happens, and if all else fails, we know that there's other ways to cook salmon, so I'm still going to eat, so I'm not overly fussed about it. Uh, you'll have to excuse the camera on my head as well. Uh, I'm trying to find new ways new angles to film. Uh, because I bought this I thought I might as well use it so you never know it might work out. I'm not even entirely certain if the uh, <laughs> bits I'm doing are in shot but we'll see. So all I'm doing now is to start off with I'm just stripping the bark off this uh, particular piece of wood and then what I will try and do in a minute is flatten it down um, and make some uh, sort of spikes and points on it to take it through the uh, through the salmon itself. So there are a fair few knots in this, which is making life a little bit awkward, so I'm just trying to do a little bit at a time. And I'll tell you what, I actually really like the way this knife feels. Um, feels really nice in the hand, um, seems very, very sharp, which is very nice straight out of the box. I haven't done anything to it, so I like that quite a lot. And all I'm doing, as I said, is taking a little bit off at a time. If it starts to bite too much, then I'll stop uh, and take a little bit less off, just to try and make sure that all the bark, as much as I can get it, is off. Perfect. So these, this is still a little bit round, so I need to now kind of flatten it out. So I'm just going to take off a little bit at a time. As I say, always making sure and being very careful with the knife to be cutting away from me. Um, just using a really simple cut. I'm not trying to do anything overly extravagant, namely because I don't know how to. I think the key to it really is to try and get it nice and smooth. Oops, I uh, tried to take off too much then, so I'll just stop, go back to it. And try and make a nice point on each end to go through the flesh of the fish. I am enjoying using this, I have to say. Maybe if I get a nice custom leather sheath for it, get one made or something like that, I'd be happy with it. Because I like the knife itself, I'm just not, not a big fan of the sheath. So there we go. Maybe a little bit flatter at the top there, so just taking little bits off again. Trying to make it as smooth as possible because I don't want splinters going into the fish. That would be unpleasant when coming to eat it. So there's a bit there that I think I need to get rid of. There we go. Not too shabby. Okay. Steak number one. Okay, so I've got my two steaks. So now I need to do the bit that goes down the middle there. Which is supposed to be 
I think something like this split in half. I think for that you would definitely need green wood. So I'm not sure. What I might do, actually thinking about it, is I might strip a longer piece like this of its bark, so I don't have the bark uh, on the fish, but then almost kind of push the fish together and, and loop it so that there's kind of a hook at the back, if you like, and then hang the fish from the stick. Maybe that's what I'll do. If I get a decent sized stick, I can then wedge it in there and just hang it over the fire so it'll get smoked nicely as well. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that. over the fire shall we? Let's see how we do. Alright, so my fish is on, we are cooking. I'm hoping to God that it doesn't all split and just fall into the fire because that would be upsetting. I don't know if it's likely to do that or not, so I guess I just have to play the waiting game. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as I said before, I'm going to carve uh, a little hanging pot, a hanging hook, sorry, for my new uh, billy camp. Uh, this one, I've decided, is probably a bit too big and probably a bit of a pain in the butt to uh, trim down, so I found a new one. A little one here it seems to fit much more easily. So what I'm going to do now is carve a few notches in with my new knife, carve a few notches um, in this bit uh, that I can then attach a piece of paracord to my cross piece, as I said, and hang this at various different heights. Uh, and then boil up some water and I might have a coffee. So I'm just going to crack on and do that. I'm not entirely certain how long the salmon has now been over the fire, but I think it's probably an hour and a half, maybe? Not entirely certain, um, but I think it's ready. The underside is nicely blackened, the skin at the top is nice and crispy and firm, as is the other bits, and most importantly, it has not fallen in the fire. So, um, I've had enough of waiting and I'm hungry, so I'm going to take it off and I'm going to eat it. Ooh. place now. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this top one out first, he says confidently. And then take this second one out. Ooh! Dodgy, dodgy, danger. God, I'm good. Stick. Oh my god. <clears throat> now, just so everyone's clear, um, I haven't put anything on this, so I haven't put any, I haven't added any salt, pepper, or 
lemon or anything like that um, and I didn't actually bring any with me so we'll just have to see what it tastes like au naturel I'm very excited about this oh the top's all crispy <laughs> Tell you what, it may have taken a long time, but my word, is it worth it? This is delicious. Tell you what, doing it over the fire has added a really nice crisp. Hopefully the camera can hear this. A really, really nice crisp at the top of the salmon. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm very, very happy and very, very impressed with myself. So, uh, I'm not going to make you watch me eat this entire thing, although you should all be very jealous because it is amazing. <laughs> what I am going to do is crack open my last beer uh, and enjoy this in front of the uh, the beautiful sunshine that has now, um, now come out. Turns out I didn't need the tarp at all. It rained like for twice for about 30 seconds, but never mind anyway. Now I'm in a little bit of shade, which is good. So, uh, so I'm going to end the video there. So thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Uh, as a general review, this way of cooking salmon, amazing. Um, my convex knife, uh, as I said before, I really like the knife itself. Uh, I really like the way it cuts. I really like the way it feels in the hand. The only thing I don't like about it is the sheath. I think the sheath is is horrible. Uh, it's really ugly and and not particularly not particularly practical. I may see if I can get a, a custom-made leather sheath for it at some point, but. I don't know. My billy can, uh, big fan of that as well. Uh, it's a little bit charred, nowhere near enough, so we need to get all that on the fire and get some proper, uh, proper dirt on it, but I'm really happy with that as well. Uh, works really well, really like the spout, very, very easy to use as a billy can is, so very, very happy with that too. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, make sure you uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification to uh, keep alert of all upcoming videos, and I shall see you very soon. Take care. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, salmon. Mm-hmm.